This will be a second look at some Kyle Fuller film. I have incorporated some film from 2018 up to 2020. Watched two other games today from 2021 as well. And it's a mixed bag, to be honest with you. One thing that I did notice is there, there are playmaking skills that he's had throughout his career that just did not show up in Denver. What, what I mean is Kyle, Kyle Fuller has consistently shown some abilities. Break on the football. You read the quarterback, react to routes instantly, not every time, but in certain cases, and make plays, passes, defense, interceptions, or even just breaking on a ball and making a quarterback double pump and then take a sack. I feel like he's really smart with timing up his reads when, when, they're, when they're bringing pressure. Those things did not show up in Denver. I did show him playing in the slot in the video that I put out last night. I think it was early in 2021 against the Eagles. And I thought his instincts were not suited toward that. Then I showed probably 12 or 15 plays of him playing left corner against the Ravens and illustrated some of the coverage inconsistencies that the Broncos had across multiple positions. Now, having said that, after watching, um, I think, two more games from 2021 today and then some stuff from 18, 19, and 20, I think it's this signing is a clear indication that we're going to be playing more zone than man. Uh, we knew that the Ravens were going away from reliance on man-free and five- and six-man pressure schemes that Wink used so much. We knew that already. But Fuller is, right now at least, one of those DBs that, when playing off coverage, he would sit on top of short routes, wait for the QB to commit, and then jump him. And he made a lot of splash plays up through like 2019, and even a few in 2020. And in two of those cases for 2020, I'm going to give you that video. You'll see some of the awareness, ability to react, and then burst to make a play. That just did not show up in 2021. He did not seem to be a great fit for the Broncos' defense, which is interesting or weird. It's surprising because Vic, Vic Fangio, the Broncos' head well, he was the Broncos' head coach. They fired him like the day after the season was over or whatever. He was the Bears' defensive coordinator up through 2018 which included two of Kyle Fuller's best years. I think Kyle Fuller even had a four picks his his rookie year playing for Fangio's defense. So there's some cause for concern if it was the same system, like, you know, the same terminology, same reads, same rules, and then he just doesn't perform. I don't know whether it was the same system or not, but there should be some reason for concern if his performance in the same system drops off that much. But like someone noted on my channel during the Fuller video that premiered last night, or look like a guy trying to get people lined up and organized pre-snap to, to no avail. And, and I can't say if that's true, but there was a comment by one person, then a couple of follow-up comments, and I was like, wow, that really makes sense. Fuller looks like a guy trying to get people on the same page, and they just weren't listening. Um, to put it bluntly, I don't think that we would have signed Carl Fuller a year ago to play in Wink system. I don't think he would have succeeded in Wink system. As a primary man defender, I will get to the plays here in a moment. I'm sorry that uh, the lead up to this is so long. Um, I don't, definitely not two years ago. You know, would we have picked him up after the injuries to Marcus Peters, and then you know were he available in midseason when Humphrey was hurt? I mean, yeah, we probably would have, but I don't think Wink's system, which is so dependent on great man defenders, I don't think Fuller would have matched up there. He's a better zone defender because of his intelligence, his awareness, and ability to break once the ball is thrown. And I think he still might retain some of that playmaking ability if we can put him in those positions to read and react. So let's get to the film. Uh, apologize for the long lead up to that. Look, Kyle, Kyle Fuller can tackle, guys. He can tackle. Here he is down here against the Bucks in 2020. And he's always going to have awareness of what the quarterback is doing. He's always going to be playing at an angle to see the quarterback. You can see that he's the he's the outside corner. I think I circled the wrong guy. Sorry. He's the outside corner, and he's got eyes on the inside. And and there will be good results and and, and some bad from looking in the backfield. Now, not necessarily in this video, to be honest with you. Looks like zone in a lot of cases here. And he's got his guy locked up, but you see he's still got eyes in the backfield looking at Brady. Brady's coming late to this release valve on third and ten. That's a shot. You don't see hits like that every game. Not from DBs. I mean, that's a knockout blow and a force fumble. They reviewed it. 
it was ruled a forced fumble. I believe that if he's able to play zone, able to see the quarterback. Now, this is a somewhat wonky situation. It looks like you have someone who might be playing man here. Maybe you've got a mixed coverage call, whatever. In any case, eyes on the quarterback, reacts to a route that he's not guarding and knocks the shit out of somebody and dislodges the football. Great play. Week 5, 2020. So, you know, by the time we get to week 1, 2022, obviously that was a long time ago. 2020 was a weird year for a lot of people, obviously, playing those who played football or not. And he did not have as many splash plays in 2020, and then obviously almost none in 2021. I think he's a great fit for our roster. Guys who can play zone and be multiple, Kyle Hamilton, Chuck Clark. I believe Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey can play anything. All right, play number two, Green Bay in 2020, kind of like a Jill ISO play. Um, I'll explain Jill ISO um, from the end zone angle. Here's Fuller. Downhill run action, like inside the C-gap. And you'll see that, number one, he's got a, he's got a safety partner, um, 38. I'm not even sure who that guy is. I haven't been terribly impressed with him. I hate to denigrate a player who I haven't film studied a whole lot of, but not really taking on this block with a whole lot of force. I mean, not going low and root hogging the guy and dislodging him and creating a pile. He's not impacting it a whole hell of a lot, if you ask me. Kyle Fuller's unblocked at the point of attack. So I'm talking about this guy taking on the block by 13. Now, we would call this Jill Iso, typically. Uh, this guy's feet are inside the tight end's feet. So, but the system that I knew and I kind of grew up in as a coach, Jill would have the wing lined up here, and it would be this. Uh, the tight end would go out on the D end, and then the wing or slot would lead up inside. You'd, and, and then Jack, a Jack call pre-snap, would be the wing digging this guy out, and then the tight end inside releasing up to the inside guy. That'd be a Jack call. And in this case, he's not lined up out here where I just illustrated he's lined up inside. So this is kind of a you know, a pre-snap indicator that's going to be Jill. But in any case, there's a lead play that 38's taking on the lead blocker again without a whole lot of force. Al Fuller, nice nice form, takes him on the, on the outside. He's always on the correct side, whether he is the primary guy making the tackle, whether he makes a huge hit or not. You can see just like the last play against the Bucks that I showed you, you know, he's taking it on with the right shoulder, the inside shoulder, the correct shoulder. I like the well-rounded nature of his game. Uh, the effort and the willingness to tackle are there. All right, third play, another run play. This is 2019 against the Broncos, ironically. I think this is going to be a tackle lead play up to the top side of the field uh, where, where Fuller is. I'll rewind it in a moment here and let you, let, you, let you see it. Running back bounces it outside. Fuller does kind of, uh, Fuller's here, by the way. He does kind of end up on the inside. He, he's, he's to the boundary, so he has the, sideline as a help defender. Corners are typically the secondary force player when they're lined up this deep. He's he would not be tip, um, typically would not be the, the primary force player lined up at this depth. Think of like an old school cover two where the corners on the line. That would he would be the primary force player because he's on the line. Lined up that far off, he's going to be what I would call the secondary uh, force player. Roquan Smith, I think it's Roquan Smith is there as well. 58 Fuller's capable of tackling out on the edges and being a part of the run fit. I like him. I'm not a fan of him in the nickel um, slot position. You can see that the tackle's pulling here. By the way, that's Joe Flacco at quarterback, in case you didn't recognize him. And there's Fuller, um, you know, delivering a hit. And Smith is there as well to finish him off. All right. Pass play from the same game. Uh, Broncos game in 2019. And this time the Broncos have... Got down to the end zone. It's uh, Here's Fuller up top. So, you know, we'll let it run one time, and I'll bring it back. Fuller's looking at the quarterback. It's a Z-hide play. So Z-hide would be, you know, Y-hide would be a tight end lined here. You know, in some run action like this, with the running back crossing the quarterback's face, and then the, the Y or the tight end running out into the flats. A lot of times down in these short yardage or goal line situations, teams will run it with the Z because the Z is faster. So they're trying to get the ball to him, you know, before the top of the numbers and then let him just outrun someone to the pylon. So the reason why I'm explaining that to you is because there is a linebacker here, and I think it's Roquan Smith, and he's very fast, obviously. 
But were this to be, were we to not have Kyle Fuller here at all, you know, this guy could have the opportunity to outrun him to the pylon. I'm not saying he's going to do it 10 times out of 10. I'm just indicating to you that Fuller had some impact on the play by coming up and forcing the ball back inside to the uh, linebacker. And the linebacker, 58, does deliver a bigger blow than Fuller does. I think Fuller's off screen um, here to our left. I think he's got great peripheral vision. Uh, indicated that in the in the film I did last night. Again, this is 2019 film. In this in this short space, Edgar Allen did a nice video today. I watched it or I listened to it. Excuse me, while I was driving, I didn't watch it while I was driving, and I listened to some of the commentary, and I was like, yeah, I kind of agree with that. He said something like, um, he would play better down in goal line situations. Here's an example of that. I'm not even sure if he used this this play or anything like this. It, tremendous awareness, great eyes. He's always. I shouldn't say always looking at the quarterback. He always has awareness of the quarterback. Now, you may say, Coach, you sat here and talked for a minute and a half about a play down here near the goal line where it looks like the Broncos are going to score. That's the end of the same play, mind you, right there. Okay, got it. Here's the very next play. Again, they're, they're, up, they're up seven, five minutes left in the game. I love old game pass because it gives you the down and distance and all that stuff. I don't get it on my new game pass. I love this play. From Fuller, I love this play, and I think that he would still be capable of doing stuff like this. If we, under Wink's system, he would not make this play. He would not. All right, so you've got a tight end. I think this is Fant, big tight end they got. you got two other receivers lined up here. looks like one of them's in motion already. So now you got two on two, heavy pressure, heavy pressure alignment, and Fuller knows that. Watch what Fuller and the slot defender do. But this is a pick, and it's impressive. But it's not a great throw by Flacco. But I'm more impressed by the switch that foot. Now there's a there's also a um, a defender leaping that Flacco kind of had to maybe maybe had to throw the football over. But look, Fant has released inside to screen or pick the slot defender. The number two guy is now running a little out. Fuller's got the savviness and awareness to go ahead and switch it. I don't know if there's a call made. Pre-snap or post-snap. I see him point. I see Fuller point at the slot defender. Yes, the playmaking skills would still carry over in terms of the ability to make the catch if he's in that position. Does he have the athleticism to get in this position um, from the 20 to the 30? Maybe not. You know, maybe not because there's too much field to cover. And again, our, at EA, Edgar Allen made that point. I'll try to link his um, video in the description here. Um, I think that in certain situations, yeah, his playmaking skills should still be there. There's no reason why they shouldn't. There's no reason why he can't make this play unless you're talking about a person who's lost two steps. At a, you can lose a half step or a step and be okay, right? But you lose two steps and, and you're done. What I Look, what I want um, Fuller man on one of the elite 15 or 18, you know, top wide receivers across the league? No. You know, with no help anywhere? No, absolutely not. I don't think he's suited to do that. But if we're playing off man and we're trying to get pressure at the same time, yes, I think he can play off man. Now, granted, this play is from 2018. Okay, so you know, criticize if you wish in the comment section. That's fine. He's going to be guarding this receiver uh, man, off man, right? And I think he still should have this ability. There's no reason why he can't. And later on, I'm going to go into a couple of things about him being beat deep, beat deep. Um, and he's even beat deep one time in this video. It turns out to be an interception. Here in 2018 against the Chargers, he's playing man. Ball's poorly thrown. You know, um, but what he's doing is he's in a position where he he understands the situation. He understands there's going to be pressure. And he's reading the quarterback. He can see. The ball's got to be thrown soon. And it's thrown. It's not a great throw. It's very wobbly. And you'll see that from the end zone angle. My apologies for the um, quality of the video. But he jumps it. Then the ball skills are there. There's contact. You'll see it better from the end zone angle. There's contact. He secures the football, almost takes it to the house. How much of all his skills will we see in Baltimore in 2022? I don't know. You know, because there's situations where if he's lost a step, that you know we won't be able to hide him. But there's also ways to replicate these reads in situations. There he is, off on the top right part of the screen, on up against number 81. I don't even know who that is to be honest with you. But you can see there's pressure here, and if and I, I, he's off screen. But if if Fuller is seeing the quarterback and seeing this immediate pressure, he knows the ball's got to be thrown. Just wobbly. He picks it. 
almost takes it to the house. Who knows, man, what, what, what we're going to get from Kyle Fuller. But if we get half of the playmaking skills that were there in 2017 to 19, it's more than worth it. Am I saying that um, you know he's going to do he's going to have four or five picks? Well, no, I don't I don't know that I don't know. You know th- now a criticism that I heard EA say as I was driving and and I thought it made sense based on what I saw too was him turning a little slow on vertical routes. He's up at the top here, by the way. I should have said that. This is the seventh out of ten plays I'm going to show you. Now it's a pick. You'll get the end zone angle. You'll see it. But there is a to me. There is a little bit of rigidity and a little bit of a slow turn here by Fuller. And Devontae Parker is, is running by him. And apparently that happened multiple times uh, this past year, too. I knew, And I mentioned in my video last night that he was supposedly targeted on five or six touchdowns in 2021. So that will be a concern. And I don't know how many of those plays are like this one. But what I will say is, and, and this is relative to the play I just showed you against the Chargers, I think in I think at this point one of two things is happening in 2021. If he's getting beat like this deep. When I say beat, you know, someone behind him. One of two things is happening. Either he's he is slower. <laughs> you know, either he is slower, uh more than a step slow and just can't turn and go. But in my opinion, this is a late turn and go. He should be turning now. In my opinion, I think he's trying to make plays. I think he's looking for, you know, these routes to, you know, some of these routes to happen. Keep come back, keep sideline route, whatever. And he's trying to make a play on those. He's trying to be a playmaker. And and in doing that, his turn is late on the vertical. Now it's a poorly thrown football. I don't even know who the quarterback is here from Miami in 2018. I don't know who that is. I know at one point they had Oswaller who was on the Broncos the year before or the year after. You can see they, they have Mac here. So there's times where he knew that they were going to get pressure and the ball is going to have to be out, but this is not really one of them. There's not a four-man rush, not really a lot of pressure. Ball was underthrown. But there's hands and timing. that Those things don't deteriorate, if you ask me. Those things don't deteriorate. If, he, if we can put him in a position to, to do what he does well, now again, you know, I I would offer to you that if he is a step slower in his turn, then he needs to be getting off earlier than he did here. And then and then if we you know if we get beat on some deep deep sideline routes, we get beat on some deep curls, then okay we do. At least we're not giving up the big one. You guys, let me know. Look, I do not expect him to win downfield routes on Jamar Chase like this, right? One on one. Who the hell does win them on Jamar Chase for real though? And Joe Burrow will not be putting the ball where this football is located, right? So it's a poor throw. I do want to talk about uh, one thing I have a little bit of person, personal knowledge about on a couple of these plays. <clears throat> Fuller's down here. He's got two receivers to his side. Now you can see that the ball has not been thrown yet, but the quarterback is pulling the pin on the grenade. That means he's getting ready to deliver the football. Fuller's already breaking. Already breaking. Back it up a couple frames. To me, he's already this his next step is is him planting here, pointing, and then trying to burst this way. That's some of you heard me say it before. Uh plant point burst is a concept that we would try to teach all of our defensive players. Being able to plant your foot, point your other foot, and burst. And he clearly can do that. But my point, and some of the things that uh, certain people do, let me see if I can there we go. Frame it forward. Is they'll read the quarterback, the front side of the quarterback's body, and I'm not. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I don't. This is a long time ago. This is dating back to West Virginia when Rich, Rich, Rich Rodriguez was there, and they were playing the three three five. I know this video is going on longer than I wanted. Um, and and they they would have people who would read the front side of the quarterback's body for three step routes, and I don't remember what it was. I don't remember if it was high elbow and a high shoulder, and pulling the pin on a grenade. It, there was something with the angle and trajectory of the front shoulder that was different on three step versus you know something deep so like what i'm saying is you know he get he gets here you know you got this it could be a deep out which is what it is and it's a pick or it could be you know something up the sideline which fuller's burnt if that is the case right 
Agree? Is he, is he going to be burnt? So what they were reading, <clears throat> what they were teaching, I should say, is to read this front shoulder. And if you get a particular read that indicates, and this is not three-step, by the way, but if you get a particular read that indicates a shorter route, then you can go ahead and jump it like this. But if you don't get that particular, you know, front shoulder or front elbow angle, and I don't remember what it was. I've searched online. There was a study that West Virginia had done. Uh, we went there as a staff in the spring and watched their spring practices. We watched them coach it 2006, 2007, somewhere around that time when West Virginia was making their run. Maybe it was, maybe it was a couple years after that. I'm not sure. And they had some information where their kids were, their, their corners were reading the quarterback's shoulder and the trajectory of his shoulder and seeing the route at the same time. So in any case, another interception here against Washington in 2019. He's getting a, I would, we call this a sail out by the number one tightly aligned receiver. So the sail is, you know, just bringing it inside a little bit and then bringing it back out to the sideline. And it's not a great, great throwing ball. I think it might be a ball. There might be some disruption there by the defensive line. Play action. Looks like the ball gets off clean. It's not thrown accurately. The fuller's able to take advantage and undercut it. You know, again, how much of that's going to show up in Baltimore? I don't know. Last play, week one, 2020. It's up here. And you can, one of the things I, I believe Fuller uh, constantly does, he tries to see the whole picture. I think he tries to see the whole picture. I think he tries to see everything in here. And that's not uncommon. I mean, there's certain guys who who do that every play and certain guys who do not. They only do it on certain reads. But he'll adjust his alignment, as you kind of see he might have done there, and his head based on the split of the receivers. I think he's really, really good when they've got tight two receivers tight to the formation. I think when he's out here a little bit more, let's say this guy's not here, and the number one receiver is spread out more, I, it doesn't appear as if he's as effective. And I don't know how to quantify that. I'm not sure exactly what that dynamic is. This is, um, you know, just being a playmaker. The ball is tipped. It's a cool coverage by uh, the Bears. There's a couple of ways that people do this. This could have been, we'll let you see the two safeties. Here's the two safeties here. This one's going to slide back. This one's going to essentially take the low hole. He's the one that's going to get the tip <clears throat> on the first crosser coming from the right. That's Matt Stafford, that quarterback, by the way. Ball gets tipped. Great jump by the safety. Tips the ball up in the air. Al Fogler's there. He's a playmaker, right? Different people do this different ways. Um, I have seen it done. Here's one way I've seen it done. I have seen the safety and the linebacker both read the running back if it's man. Whereby, if the, if the running back goes this way, then, then, the, then the linebacker would stay in the low hole. And, and someone over here would cut to the flats. And then this guy would stay high, like a half field safety. So it would look like cover two, whereby this guy has the flats. You know, this guy would take you know, some kind of lo low hole dropper, and this guy would take a half field you know, alignment. On this particular play, running back goes here. This guy goes here, and what happens is, so they're vacating this middle of the field with this linebacker. So what happens is, this safety replaces him. Am I saying that's what happened on this play? No, I'm just indicating to you how I have seen this done before to appear multiple with your coverages when really all that's happening is one, two, and, and in some cases maybe three guys are reading the same person. Now, is that what is that what Kyle Fuller does here, you know, where he's looking into... You know, he sees he's tilting his head. I don't know. I'm not trying to sell you that he is. I'm just trying to um, describe a way that people can appear multiple and just react to whatever routes there are. Because most of the time when a running back goes out into the flats, particularly on third down, someone from this side is going to go replace because they're assuming the linebacker is going to vacate that area and play man. So in this case, they kind of sucker Stafford into throwing the route that they want get it tipped up in the air, and Call Fuller is the beneficiary. Hopefully I didn't lose you guys' interest with that explanation there. Um, it's not one of those things, that last uh, adjustment with coverage is not one of those things that's easy to do with high school kids. Um, you kind of have to do it, um, kind of have to tell them a call to do it, so they just do it. 
you know, and, and, and don't read it, you know, based upon tendencies that you have in the, at the NFL level, these guys will be reading it at an instant. And I think Kyle Fuller is exceptional at that. Now he's not the guy who made the read he is the guy who had the interception. I think he's a smart player. I think it's a better pickup than a lot of people have uh, given credit for. And again, I think it's an indicator that we're going to be playing a lot more zone than man. And when we do play man, we're going to play off man. And Kyle Fuller will probably have some help over the top, especially if he's playing left corner outside, you know, weeks one through six, when presumably Marcus Peters may be out. You guys let me know what you think of the breakdown or any of my, um, you know, technique descriptions and some of the coverage stuff that I tried to give you. Appreciate you guys' time. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so if you enjoy the content.